AM 630. WMAL. 8.07 on WMAL, where Washington comes to talk. Coming up at 8.35, we're going to talk to Jake Tapper of CNN. He's been following this VA scandal. We'll get the very latest on that story from him. Again, Jake Tapper, 8.35. Brian Wilson alongside Larry O'Connor. And- Yeah, all you adolescents, you need extra time to wake up, apparently. That's what the uh, Fairfax County School Board is going to be discussing over the next couple of weeks. Ryan McElveen, he's a board member of Fairfax County Schools. In fact, not only is he a board member, Brian Wilson, but he is, in fact, yeah. the uh, the king of snow days, I believe is what they called him. Isn't are, are you, You're the king of snow days, right, uh, Mr. McElveen? Supposedly, yes. Your, tw- your Twitter feed was very popular amongst your students. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, we want to talk about this, and I know that you're going to be having uh, an opportunity for parents to sound off. Um, there's four days in May, 19th, 20th, 27th, 28th, and then in June, the 7th, 9th, 10th, and 11th. The locations and those dates will be on our page there at WMAL.com for Mornings on the Mall, so you can all go out and have your voices heard. But uh, what is the deal with this? Why suddenly do we need to change this time for high school kids because they have trouble waking up in the morning and they don't function well in the morning? We, somehow we've survived all these years. We have survived, but, you know, this has been actually an effort underway in Fairfax County for almost two decades, and this is the fourth iteration of this uh, effort. And so the the school board contracted with Children's National Medical Center to um, create some options to bring out to the community uh, for changing the start time. And um, we uh, actually committed back in 2012 to starting high school after 8 a.m. So this is something the board is firmly committed to. All right, so you got four options there, and, and depending on which option you choose, it could cost you somewhere between an additional 2.7 and, what is it, $7.6 million, depending on which way you go, because you got to buy buses and there are other expenses associated with this. Uh, I think uh, the question that some people would say is, why do we need to spend money on this? Let's just get the kids out of bed and make them go to school. Right, and you know, as uh, I'm a graduate of Fairfax County Public Schools, and that was as a student, I always uh, wanted to um, get to school early, get out early, so I could um, do my extracurriculars. Right. But oh, you were well, that kid, Mr. McElvey. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so, um, but you know, over time, my opinion has changed as I've learned more about the sleep. And, science, and what has which, been the most persuasive thing to you? So um, we know that uh, mel- melatonin levels in children, um, at, um, adolescents, peak later in, in the evening, and they last later in the morning. So that, that's when kids are getting their uh, best sleep. And um, we know um, the uh, statistics show that um, academic performance, um, safety, um, and overall health will improve if we shift the times later. So, uh, all right, l- l- let me just ask you this, because part of what we're doing, especially when our kids hit high school, is we're starting to get them ready for the real world. We're starting to get them ready either for higher education in colleges or universities or to join the workforce. Uh, they're not going to get that kind of accommodation as they join the real world. I, they may A lot of people may function better and sleep better at certain hours, but if they get a job, they got to answer that bell. Aren't we uh, coddling the kids a little too much here? You know, and uh, that, that's a valid argument, but... My belief is if we start them out um, with with a better, healthier foundation and at adolescence, they will be um, prepared to um, live longer, healthier lives and uh, work and perform better when they get into the workforce. All right, so when you talk about traffic, and everybody talks about traffic in this area, and especially in Fairfax County, your peak times are like, you know, from 7.30 to about 9.30. So the buses are now going to be more in that in that in the morning rush. And then you're going to have them, in some cases, buses out on the roads uh, later in the afternoon into the beginning of the afternoon drive time. Uh, I mean, isn't that going to be something that is going to have an impact on everybody's lives? It will have an impact. And the idea is that uh, traffic patterns will adjust. Uh, obviously, we're still going to have traffic between those hours. And, uh, but we've seen that in Loudoun County, they start their schools at, at 9 a.m. and release yeah. them at 3 Yeah, but I mean, when the buses stop, traffic has to stop. Yeah. That's and, the problem. And right. Loudoun, Loudoun isn't really in the belly of the beast the, in the same way that Fairfax County is. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. And it, like I said, that's a valid argument. But um, the, the goal is to educate the community and uh, 
Um, well, I mean, the goal is to educate the community, but the community has to function. Right. We just got to deal with it, in other words. There's going to be more buses, you're going to be stopped more, and there's more traffic and congestion. Just deal with it. Right. Well, uh, and y- y- our, our hope is that traffic patterns will adjust. All right, Ryan McElveen is our guest. He's a member of the Fairfax School Board. And, again, parents, you can sound off about this. Four dates in May, four dates in June. We'll have the specific dates and locations because they spread out all over Fairfax County. And they want to hear from you. I mean, if you hear uh, the parents coming up and saying, you know, this is not a good idea, are, are you open to that? We are certainly open to any opinions at this point. But, uh, again, we've, as a system, committed um, – so yeah. lots of money and and study time over the years, and we're committed to doing something starting in uh, twenty fifteen. So 15. so let me make, that's a very important point. If people are against this idea, well, that ship has sailed, right? That ship has sailed. However, if if they um, see these plans that we're putting out and they have um, ideas, constructive criticism, we can certainly adjust the plans. Uh, let me get you, if I could, well, since I have you, uh, Mr. McIlvain, uh, our own Martin DeCaro and WMAL News has been reporting on this story of uh, 40% of educators in Fairfax County now saying that they don't have enough time for uh, instructional time. They're spending way too much of their day, and they're saying more than 10 hours a week on schoolwork outside the regular school day, and they're losing time in the classroom to actually teach kids. Have you seen this report? Kimberly Adams of the Fairfax Education Association uh, is, has been on talking about it. Right. Yeah. I mean, we're we're certainly well aware of that. And are, are, do you want to go on the record here in terms of what you think the uh, Fairfax County Board of Education should do about it? Well, we're looking at ways we can restructure the school day, both at the elementary and secondary um, levels. Um, they involve um, uh, increasing the length of the elementary school day on Mondays, so that there's um, m- and incorporating more teacher planning time in there. Um, but what what we've seen is that as the state has put more and more requirements in terms of testing on us, that we've had that our burdens have increased greatly at the local level. And and as a result of that, ultimately the teachers are not actually able to teach the kids as much as they used to. Right, and they don't have as much time to prepare as well. All right, getting back to the school bus thing. So so tell me, there are four proposals on the table. Do you have a personal preference as the one you like the most? Because each one of them has a varying cost associated with it. That's correct. Uh, you know, I mean, we the goal is to do this for um, as little cost as possible. I personally do not have a preference. I'm waiting to hear from the community. Hmm. All right, Mr. McElveen, uh, Ryan McElveen, Fairfax uh, School Board member, uh, thank you so much uh, uh, for being here. It's always good to talk to you. And uh, you. I, again, those hearings are upcoming. If you have an opinion about it, you'll want to check our website, find out what date works best for you, and go express your voice and have your voice heard. Well, yeah, and listen, there's so much energy and sh- so much action and so much talk here about you know Barack Obama or John Boehner or who's going to be the president three years from now. You know, this is democracy, representative democracy happening right in your neighborhood, and it affects your home, your children, and your kids' education, uh, this is the kind of thing that you can have an effect on. I, I mean, Mr. Uh, uh, McElveen, McElveen said that, uh, the, you know, they've already committed to this, but yeah. I've got to think that if they hear from the parents, yeah. uh, that commitment can change if you think it's a bad idea. Yeah, so, you know, look, it, when, when you speak, trust me, people who are elected listen.